Welcome to worship. I am Pastor Anne Marie Burke, your new interim pastor here at Central Lutheran Church in Arizona City and in Casa Grande. This is my very first week with you, and I am glad to be here with you, leading you now here in worship. And I am so excited about the wonderful things that God is going to do in us and with us and through us together. Today, Sunday, May 24th, is a day that we are celebrating ascension, the ascension of Jesus Christ. After Christ rose from the dead on Easter Day, then ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. We celebrate the ascension of Jesus Christ today. And so I invite you now into worship. Not just hearing a sermon, but I invite you to worship with me actively. I invite you to pray with me and to read the scripture in your Bibles at home or in a Bible app or online, whatever you may have with you. And since we're worshiping, I invite you to sing with me, to sing with me at home where, or wherever you are right now. We will join together in this simple song to get our hearts awake and facing the shining light of God. And since I don't have a wonderful singing voice, I'm not a performer, I am trusting you to sing with me and not leave me hanging all by myself. So I'll sing a short phrase and you echo back. I sing and then you echo. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. That's how the first part goes. You may know that song already. You might be hearing it for the first time. But that first part, we echo, I sing, and then you echo back, like this. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. And then the next line we sing together. It goes like this. Listen first. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Sing that with me now. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And then we echo again. This is the day, this is the day, and then we sing all together, that the Lord has made. That's a simple song. Let's now sing our praise to God. Ready? This is the day, this is the day, that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice, and be glad in it and be glad in it together. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us pray. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that, as he promised, Christ abides with us on earth to the end of time, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's now hear from the Word of God. If you have a Bible at home, now's a good time to go get it, if you would like to read with me. And if you don't have a Bible with you at the place where you are right now, you could look up these Bible verses online and read them there. Or maybe if you have a Bible app on your phone, you could go ahead and pull that up now. And the beauty of this being a video is that you could pause it now while you go get what you need. But you don't have to read along. Perhaps you want to simply just listen and maybe close your eyes and listen to the Word of God. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke in the 24th chapter, Luke 24, verses 44 through 53. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And there they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And also a reading from Ephesians. This will be from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These words we just read, we just heard, these words open the letter to the Ephesians in a warm greeting to the church in Ephesus. And I'm going to be bold to use them too right now to greet you, Central Lutheran Church, as I begin now as your interim pastor. These words of greeting, of blessing, of thanksgiving, of prayer and encouragement and exhortation and hope all these words, I am going to boldly and unapologetically use them too. Because I also, like that writer of long ago, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. And I have heard of your love toward all the saints. I have heard about your strength together as church, strong in faith and in stewardship and in service. I can see that you are faithful through your worship of God. I can see your faith in evidence through your practice of worship. Even now during this pandemic, and we are responsibly refraining from gathering together physically for a while, you're still worshiping. The very fact that you're seeing this right now and worshiping online here, and have been listening to the sermons online for these last number of weeks, demonstrates that you are still gathering together as church to worship. And I can see that before this pandemic hit, you have a strong practice of attending worship every week. Because I don't know if you know this, but it's common for congregations just on average to have roughly 30% of their membership attending worship weekly. Just 30% of their whole membership tend to average, it's the average attendance, just 30%. You have 85%. 85%. You are strong in your devotion to worship God. And so, because we've been needing to do that from our individual homes for a time, 
and will need to continue doing so for some while longer, I know that the challenge of this pandemic, I know the challenge of this current storm is one that we can sail through with Christ at the helm because you have faith, and I see evidence of that faith. So know that I am in conversation with the larger church on the synod and local levels about when and in what way we can begin gathering together in person safely. That discernment is happening, so I ask you for your continued patience as we discern that prayerfully and thoughtfully. I can also see that you are strong in stewardship. I see that every second week of the month you're in the practice of encouraging one another to double your current giving. That's extraordinary. That's remarkable. You practice that mark of discipleship of faithful giving. There's so many marks of discipleship, prayer and worship and fellowship and service and stewardship, giving of your money, pooling your money together so that God can do, use it to do remarkable things in these communities that we serve. You're strong in that. And I can also see that that service, your service, through the quilts that you create and the classes that you host for English as a second language and, and GED classes, and how you encourage one another to take part in learning Spanish. I noticed that in your newsletter and online as well. You're caring for the vulnerable and breaking down barriers that divide neighbor from neighbor and replacing those barriers with understanding. The mutual understanding that comes from shared language, from a shared ability to understand one another and to grow in that ability to understand. And so I too, like the writer of this letter to the Ephesians, I also give thanks to God in Christ Jesus for you, for your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all. This letter to the Ephesians throughout the whole letter speaks of the church as the body of Christ, the fullness of Christ who fills us all. And at the same time, though, Ephesians does not pretend that we've got it all together. The writer knows that we, the church, are not the perfection of Christ. Far from it, if that's a news flash to you. We do our best, stumbling in this complex and complicated world that we live in, especially the way it is right now. But it is complicated, and it is messy. And so we stumble and we step on each other's toes and hurt one another, even though we have good intentions. Even the good-hearted do sometimes fail and cause hurt or harm. It happens. We are human. And while God in Christ forgives all our sin, forgives us when we do stumble so that we can rise again to love and serve fresh and renewed and set free, while God does that forgiving, God also calls us to grow up in every way into him who is the head. To grow up in every way into him who is the head. As Christ's body, we, the church, are called to strive to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. That's going to be in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. To lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So when, in our reading this morning in verse 17, in chapter 1, verse 17, the writer of this letter is praying for God to give us wisdom, and revelation, and in some translations, wisdom and knowledge. When the writer prays for that, it's not just some standard set of prayer words that were used conventionally. But this was an honest prayer request, asking for a specific need, that we, the church, would grow up in every way into Christ, who is the head of the church, the body of Christ, that we continue growing to know three things, the hope to which God has called you, your rich inheritance from God, and the power of God who raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at God's right hand. That we continue growing to know these things, the power of God who raised Jesus Christ, the power that reconciled us to God, the gracious and self-sacrificing, humble strength of God in Christ. That's what fills us. 
as we know that power, that humble, self-sacrificing power of God in Christ. And the rich inheritance we have from God is the capacity to forgive one another when we hurt one another. And patience with one another. Patience with one another. Being generous with God's love and also with God's compassion. Being generous with an understanding that of what a person is going through and maybe that's why they're, they're not acting at their best. Because we ourselves have been there. We know that we too sometimes don't act at our best. And so we give the compassion. We see another person with that compassion. Seeing a person through the eyes of Christ. Knowing that they also see us through the eyes of Christ. And we are joined as one. This rich inheritance we have from God is the hope, the hope we have in Christ. Because Christ did not ascend into the heavens to leave us all alone. He didn't just zip up into heaven and went away forever, bye bye. No, Christ is with us now and in all, in all the various places that we are gathered as we worship right now. In your home, maybe you're seeing this at work, maybe you're seeing this from a hospital, maybe you're seeing it from your car, maybe you're listening to it in some way, shape, or form. In all the various places that we are gathered right now in worship, God gathers us together as one. Regardless of miles that may separate us, we are gathered as one. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 and following. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. So take heart, people of God. Be of good cheer, children of God. Even though we're worshiping from our homes right now, we're still the church. The church is not dying. In fact, we are going strong through the power of the Holy Spirit because our faith is not in, in buildings as beautiful and special to us as they are. Our faith is not in our buildings, but our faith is in Christ who strengthens us. Our faith is in Christ who strengthens us. Our identity as the body of Christ holds true, especially now, as God calls each one of us individually and corporately together to meet the needs around us with gracious love and compassionate humility and joyful service. So whether you live in Arizona year-round or you split your time between two states, we are church together. And our time is now to live that out joyfully in the many ways that are so needed around us right now. God is calling us to love deeply and broadly and generously from wherever you are. Through the place, though the places that we worship and the ways we have worshipped have changed over the centuries, we continue to be the church, the body of Christ together. Whether worshiping in someone's home or in a lean-to in a field or some great cathedral, we are church together. Whether singing at full throttle or praying silently, we are church together. Whether we gather in person or through a recorded worship service online, we are church together. Whether we place our offering in a plate as it passes by us or we send it directly through our bank accounts, we are church together. Whether we meet in a big group for a big service project or we serve from our individual households, we are church together. So over these next weeks, I am so looking forward to learning about you more and getting to know you, what your loves are, what your strengths are, what your gifts are, how you joyfully serve 
the areas where you are desiring to grow fuller, more fully in the knowledge of Christ and more broadly in love for our neighbors. I am so looking forward to getting to know you and all about you as we grow together more fully and deeply and joyfully as the body of Christ together for the sake of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. As we move now into this next part of worship, we move from our Arizona City location to our Casa Grande location. Now to consider the, the world that God has given us, the mission that God calls us to, praying for the needs of the world and giving of our gifts so that we together can move fully into God's mission to love and bless the world. So we return to God what God has first given us, ourselves, our time, our possessions, the things that we can do, the money that we've earned, that we do all through the gifts that God gave us in the first place. We give them joyfully to God so God can take them from the widow's mite to the biggest check you can imagine and create a bounty far more than any of us could ever do or even imagine on our own. So at this time, you can give your offering directly through your bank to, in a uh, direct deposit or bill pay option. Or you can use PayPal. Some are using PayPal to give their gifts. Or you can write a check and mail it to the church. Our mailing address is on our website. So I invite you to send those in now because God uses all of our gifts to bring hope and healing into the world. So now let us pray for the gifts we now give to God. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration of the life of Christ that we have today. But you make of our gifts in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Nourish us through your word for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. And now let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. I will end each petition by saying, Lord, in your mercy, and then I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, your response is, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us together to be the body of Christ in this world. You call us together. You raise us new each day in the, the, the life of our baptisms that you, that you gave us through the Holy Spirit. You forgive our sins. You cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you bind us together as one, one body in Christ. Fill your church this day with your hope, your presence, your joy, that we would see all those around us with the eyes of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, use your church this day to fill those around us with hope. Open our eyes to see the needs around us and give us the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we could discern what our gifts are, what our talents are, what our joys are that, that meet the needs that are around us. Match up our talents with the needs around us so that your hope would be known in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, gracious God, as we discern together as church, as many congregations around the world, as we discern how to worship in these days and to discern when and how we can meet together in person, give us your wisdom, grant us your patience, give us hearts that are willing to listen to one another, and most especially that are willing to listen to you so that your will be done and not our will, that we follow your timing and not our own. We pray, God, for you to lead us forward in your grace and your wisdom. Father, your will be done. Lord, in your mercy. 
Healing God, we pray for all those this day that are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for all of those who need an extra measure of your, of the, that sense of your presence and your healing touch. Some of them we know by name, and so they, we name them before you, silently or aloud. Grant them your peace, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, loving God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in this grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now, as we move from this gathering into the day that God has given us, receive God's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>